Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk about this paper on Willing the Predictive Power of Static Structure in Glass Systems, presented by Victor Best et al. from Google DeepMind, the AI lab of Google. This paper was published in the journal Nature Physics uh, last April. So this paper is about a glass transition. Uh, what is a glass? A glass is a, is a property of uh, li liquids that uh, when uh, cooled quickly, it becomes a state of disorder state, freeze it. For, for example, you take this liquid, if you freeze it slowly, you get a crystal, but if you freeze it fast, you get a glass. Uh, the difference between the glass and the crystal is that a crystal has an order into the structure, while a glass looks like a liquid uh, frozen time. But it's not just uh, this uh, glass occurs in materials. materials. Uh, glass can also occur in another kinds of system, for example, traffic jams, where you can see, uh, compare cars with liquids, cell migration, polymers, iron, and so on. The objective of this paper is to study glass transition with machine learning. So before I talk how you can, you can use machine learning with glass transitions, I talk about a, a kind of neural network called graph neural network. A graph neural network is a graph that takes it's a neural network that takes a graph as an input to operate some function or learn an objective. It's more useful uh, graph neural networks when you are dealing with non-included space, such as molecular neural networks. And uh, one property of graph neural networks is that they have invariance under permutations. Here are examples of graph neural networks. You can, can transform molecules, for example, to graphs, mass spring systems, any body systems, uh, rigid body, and, and so on. So you can transform a system into a graph, and you take this graph as input to the neural network. So how you, can you transform a, a glass system into a graph? You take the... 3D structure of the system you want to, to create a graph. In this case, is a liquid and the glass. Uh, the, so you take the 3D input, transform into a graph. In this case, the graph has the nodes. The nodes correspond to the particles. And the edges correspond to the connection between the particles. In this case, they connect the edges within a a uh, small range. So if a particle is within two distance particles from the first one, they are connected. This graph is, it serves as inputs to the graph neural network. And what the neural network makes is the predictions from the mobility. So because it's machine learning, you need the data to train the neural network. So it, here's how they get the data. They made a mixture of two kinds of particles, one small and one large particle, uh, 4,096 particles inside a cube, interacting by linear Jones potential. Uh, this, this, these particles are simulated with molecular dynamics, and the interaction of particles are only short ranges. So to train a neural network, they are, the neural network is trained to predict the propensity of the large particles. The propensity is the mobility, how much the particles move across the time within the system. Uh, the equation here is how you obtain the propensity. It's the, the norm between the, mobi the mobilities of uh, the part, each particle. So R corresponds to the position of the particles inside the cube. Uh, the neural network has two kinds of updates, a node update that embeds the 
in the net the edge position and the node position uh, within the net neural network. And the, so these edges and nodes are encoded by the neural network. The, after they are encoded, they pass through the graph neural network. The graph make up updates. Uh, each update uh, increase the, the interaction between the particles they call the shell. So the first shell, then updates the second shell, then updates the third shell, and so on. And after that, the, the, the graph neural network is passed through a decoder. So the decoder is what they informs the propensity. So here are the results. If the distribution of particles with the propensity, it's measured between zero and, and one uh, with different temperatures. This, this graph A on the left shows the true propensity obtained by the molecular dynamics. And the second graph B shows the predicted propensity by the neural network. Uh, here's shown other results with the short time scales. Uh, what you see is the cube of particles. The black points show the most mobile uh, particles from the data, and the colored regions correspond the, to the propensity of the particles predicted by the neural network. Uh, red is more propensity, and blue less propensity. So you can see that uh, the higher propensity corresponds to the black dots, which is a good result. Here show the results from long time scales. Um, the same as the short time, the main difference is that here you have um, a more ranged time. So for glass, you, the mobility of the particles is around a thousand years, maybe more. And this is what corresponds to this long time scale. Uh, Additionally, more than just simulate the glass, uh, you can maybe gain insight, physical insights from, from this neural network. This, this is an ablation study where they cut the, the, the network, the glass network. So the left shows the when you just uh, take away the particles and just leave some particles interacting. And the second case is when you perturb the third and high order shells. This, is, this kind of uh, ablation can inform you more insights about what's happening in this, in this glass transition. So what they, they inform is in the near future or liquid phase, Particles only are infected by nearby particles. Uh, they, they know this because uh, you can obtain this information comparing the, the, the mobility, predicted mobility of the neural network from the truth, from the ground data you obtain by simulating. And far future and low temperatures where there is the glass transition particle effect affected by long range interactions. So if you cut uh, the, the network with, in long range interactions uh, for, for far future and low temperature, the mobility uh, decrease the prediction. So you have more errors. So conclusions, uh, graph neural networks can be used to model the dynamic system such as glass and you can provide insights about physics of glass transitions, such as the glass transition and low temperatures. There are more correlations between the particles. You can find more information in their blog spot about towards understanding glasses with neural networks. And that's it. Thank you.